And so I'm in this survey and it says that the job is GISD uh, one. Okay, so that's just the name that Kenny gave it. If I hit the red enter key um, while that job is highlighted, I can come in and there's a whole list here of other jobs. And I can see that I have options along the bottom to make a new job, F2, or to edit an existing job. So if I hit F3, um, GISD1, it just says KD, Kenny Demershi created it. It's stored on the card. Um, if I switch tabs over to the coordinate system, he doesn't have a coordinate system defined for this job right now. Um, if I uh, go into uh, that, I have a list of coordinate systems that are loaded on here. So uh, he collected these coordinates with the GPS using UTM Zone 12 North. And so I can see I've got UTM 12 on there. So I can hit enter for that. Um, and that's what it's going to use for my uh, coordinate system. So you can see it's got a WGS84 ellipsoid model, UTM projection, uh, etc. And uh, we won't worry about a code list. So what we've done is we've just specified the right coordinate system for that job and the job is just a container where the data will go, okay? And so if I hit uh, continue F1, if someone you want to hit continue, that takes me back out to this uh, survey uh, begin menu. So I'm in the right job, it's got the right coordinate system. Um, the configuration set, it's set up to collect in metric, um, so that's good. And, um, and then the reflectors, see how there's the left and right arrows? So if you, if you want to hit the left or right arrows, you can toggle through and see what reflectors are, op are options. Does someone want to try that? So what does it say? Like a mini, like a mini 360, like a mini prism, like a reflective tape, something who knows? <laughs> Seiko <laughs> reflector list, right? You guys know what that is? And then there's like a 360 prism. That's where we were. That's what we want. Now the reason that it's important to get the um, the reflector right is you see right below that. What does it say? Additional constant. 23.1 yes. millimeters. That's oh, what is it, Huh, yeah. Yeah, with the humidity and the temperature. Yeah. Right. They're not flying high enough. Um, so um, if you look on here, it says prism constant plus 23.1 millimeters. And what that means is that there's an offset of positive 23 millimeters from where the instrument thinks is the center versus where the center on this particular prism is. So you can buy prisms, like uh, standard prisms that have zero offset, but um, getting that offset is critical. Um, otherwise you're gonna be 2.3 centimeters in this case, 23 millimeters out on all of our measurements. So it's important that you enter the right prism. Go and cut that line. <laughs> I'm surprised that they're uh... okay so if we go now um, along the bottom if we hit continue however this thing is set up previously whoever did it wherever it was it's just going to use that position and that orientation and now we've we totally moved this thing around right so we've got to set this up so we're going to want to hit f3 if someone wants to do that for setup and this is the station setup and so under method if i hit enter there's some things there that should sound familiar to you mm -hmm. one base station your resectioning your orientation and height transformation transfer, yeah whatever that is so we won't do orientation and height transfer but the, the three most common are you know known point and set azimuth that's the top known point and then backside to known point right that's the second one that's the one we're going to do and then resection and there's different flavors of resections so or free stations so we'll do known backside point and then it says station coordinates where am i going to get them so i'm going to get them well yeah we are going to get them from the gps but this doesn't communicate to the gps 
the way mm -hmm. it's set up right now. So we'll get them from the job. So if I scroll down, it wants to know, well, what's my station ID? Yes. So he's got CP1202 already entered in here. So if I hit enter, there's a list. And now these are all the points that are exist in this job. And if I go in here, um, I can see there's CP1202. And if I hit F3 to edit it, um, notice that it has a northing of 4,621,000, easting 432,000, orthometric height of 1431 meters. And so if I were to look at his notes here, so this is CP1202, and is that the same? Yep. Yes. So he's entered that, that in here for us. If we wanted to enter it ourselves, mm -hmm. we could just scroll down, hit enter, and change the coordinate values of oh. those. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape. So, so he's already put 1202 and 1203 in this job, and that's critical. And he didn't just pull that out of thin air. He used the rover that they have over there, and he came and he sat on here, and he sat there for a couple minutes until he got a nice tight fix. And then he took um, that quarter value, wrote it down, and then manually entered it in here. Okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. so, um, so if the station ID were occupying 1202, then the height you guys measured, uh, you had 1.507. He has 1.504. You want to use your value. We could do that. 1.507, right? And then um, we hit continue. And now on the next screen... It's asking us uh, what is our backsite ID. So that point is 1203. We've already got that coordinate entered. He's measured the mm -hmm. height of instrument, or sorry, height of rod for us to be 1.578, and that's what's entered in here for reflector height. And so, and then the calculated azimuth we can't adjust. That's based off of those two coordinates. So based off those two coordinates, it thinks that that's about 90 degree or 90.36, which is telling us yeah that that's about due east from us right so that's that's about right so now what we have to do and see the calculated distance between those two coordinates it says they're 81 meters apart and so if i look just look at this so if i look in the easting that one's 420 that one's 501 that's about 80 meters apart right um, it's going to be a little bit different because the northings aren't exactly the same, right? But that's that's pretty close. So that passes mm -hmm. the laugh test. So then down below it says change in horizontal distance and change in height. Now we're not going to get that until we take a measurement and try to set this thing up. So we've told it you are here. We've told it what that point is, but now we need to measure that point. And so to do that, um, we're going to have to rotate over. And so what we have on the top and the bottom here are some rough um, sighting uh, uh, little scopes on the bottom and the top. And so I can look at that and I kind of roughly position it. And then once I get it roughly positioned, I look inside the scope and I try to focus it. And then I can move to the right and left and up and down until I get it exactly in the center. So I want each of you to, to uh, practice doing that. Um, and then we'll have the next person see if they like what you did and then I'll screw it up and uh, make each of you do it. <laughs> How do we know it's already right in the center? You'll see. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so what it just did was it recorded um, the shot and it's not perfect. So we're about three um, centimeters out in the horizontal and about two millimeters out in the vertical. That's pretty damn tight actually on the vertical, but the horizontal is out a little bit. And so what do we do? We could run through everything again, double check our measurements um, and, uh, and try and get that three centimeters to come down. Or we can back up a second and say, well, hold on. How did, where did I get those two coordinates? GPS. GPS. What's the accuracy, typical accuracy of GPS coordinates? One to five, yeah, he sat on for a little bit, probably one to two centimeters. We're three centimeters out. Usually if you're within one or two centimeters on a total station setup, that's pretty good. You can get it down to like half a mil um, if it's a control network that was set with this instrument. 
This, in this case, we're occupying points that are set by a GPS. They're three centimeters out. There's a little bit of air in this. There's obviously the air in that. That's probably okay. And we're bang on in the vertical. So that's not so, that's not so bad. So what's nice about this is when you occupy a known point and backsite to a known point, or when you resection, you have a measure of how good you've occupied the network. And so we have this air that's now prop could be propagated into all of our points. So if we hit set now, um, it says station and orientation has been set. So it knows where it is and it knows which direction is north. You're ready to collect data. And so you hit uh, F4 for OK, and then it takes us into a survey screen. Now on the survey screen, we have a point ID, and then we have a reflector height. Our reflector height, or rod height, is going to be in metric. What is that on right now? 1.5. Or that one's not where it could be. 1.8. 1.8. So mm. you enter in 1.8 for the rod height there. You just go down. Yeah. And then... Enter. This one? Yep. And then use yellow. And then hit 8. And then enter. Okay. Good. Um, and so then on the code on the point ID we're gonna start collecting aerial targets so we'll say like that one will be AT40 okay so um, if, if you want to hit enter um, this is those of you that texted in the old days uh, QWERTY <laughs> keyboard right yeah that's what this is okay <laughs> um, and so you'll see there's what they call reverse Polish notation on the bottom um, so this F6 it says switch to number or switch to alphanumeric so when it says number it's mm -hmm. actually in alphanumeric <laughs> so what we want to do is uh change that to a t 40. so someone want to try that I'll hit it real quick a yeah. oops it just went over yeah. automatically yeah, yeah, Jeez, yeah. just like an old phone it is <laughs> oops there you go and then and then you got to change it to numeric f6 and then 40. That, that's it. Okay, so now we can all go over here. Someone want to bring this? And what, so when you bring those up like that, and then you can bring it over. Put it right on there. Boom, point this. So we obviously don't want to move this, right? Because we've already got pictures of it from the sky. So you want to put it dead on the center. Oh, perfect, gee, yeah, perfect, huh? And then you're looking at this, trying to get it roughly bubble level, and when you do, at the same time you're doing that, bring this up, and then hit those thumb blocks. Bop! Lock in. Or you can just hit the thumb locks now, and then just use... Get <laughs> bipod. And then you can now just um, loosen the thumb locks. Okay and then get it where you want it. Yeah. Let's go, Lydia. So to actually turn the unit on, you want to turn the remote on. Whoops, I clicked on the run right next to it. Uh, if I click on the prism, see how there's my list of prisms. And it is a 360 prism, so that's good. So we'll leave that alone. Um, and if I click on this one next to it, um, it says ATR, Automatic Target Recognition. So it says turn off, which means that it's on. So what I'm going to do, she's done a perfect job of sighting this up. So you made us do it the hard way. Yep. And <laughs> can you just look through and tell me where the crosshairs are now? They're off to the left. Off to the left. They're not on orange anymore. So keep your eye on that. Is it automatically? Yeah, so what I'm going to do is hit distance, so just watch what it does. So I hit distance. Did it line it up? Yep. Yep, so it just lines it up perfectly on the center so that it's, um, it's dead on in the middle there. And so now um, if I hit, um, if I scroll down here, oh, we don't have it in that mode. Uh, 
Well, it's telling us this is 10.6 meters. I have to change the configuration set to actually give us a preview of the coordinates. But 10.6 meters, you buy that, it seems about right, right? And so if I hit record, that's um, F3. Now it's recorded that point and it's advanced it to AT41. So now we can move to the next point and try to take a shot. Or you just change the codes. You just so if someone wants to someone so if someone wants to grab that, maybe you could you just did this one and go over to the middle of that one and then yell to us what the nar the target number is. F1. So F1 is the same as hitting distance then record. It's all. So hit F1. Good. Why do you run over to this one? Oh, he didn't have it leveled. Yeah, yeah it's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're to that point now. It's yeah, point. It, it isn't. Uh, That's true. It's gonna, not gonna make it. You, you can't. You guys won't physically have high enough resolution in the photo to be able to pick the center of the target that accurate. So it's a little bit that will be off there. 17, he said? Oh, perfect. It's it's advanced right to 17. So all we have to do is when he looks like he's level. So then all we have to do is hit F1. F1. Yep. And you want to do it? Is he level? Okay. He's, yeah, he's still dicked out. Eh? Okay. <laughs> Good. So you can come on back. Bring the prism. Huh? Yeah, no. <laughs> we'll make the next group get the rest. Yeah. Oh, it didn't work. You didn't get any points. Right? Yeah. yeah, go ahead and do it again. <laughs> so, all we've done is we've set up the instrument over a known point, with backside to a known point. Happens to be points we got from the GPS, so we're in those real world coordinates. And then we recorded uh, one, two, three. We screwed up and didn't record that one because we hit distance but not uh, record. And that's it. So. Yeah, and so when it's close like this, it has to work really hard. So like, you can easily lose it. Yeah, oh, I lost it. it. You see, now it's like, oh, where is it? Where I went this it? way.